Okay, so OpenAI finally released MCP support in ChatGPT. Well, kind of. So don't ditch Claude just yet. In this video, I'm gonna break down what it means, go over the pros and cons, and show you how to set it up. Now, first things first, let's just go over the limitations or just set the expectation here. First of all, it's not in ChatGPT desktop, it's only on the web. Two, it's not released to everyone yet. Three, it's only in deep research, and that has multiple ramifications. The first thing that comes to mind is running a deep research takes a lot of time. So many of the MCP servers that I use with Claude are not relevant here because I don't want to start a task that will take 10 minutes. And more than that, the MCP servers that they support are only really for search right now. Also, it's only supporting MCP servers that are hosted remotely. And I talk a lot about MCP servers, but if this is your first time getting into MCP, it literally stands for Model Context Protocol. Anthropic released it, and this is an open source. It's a really easy way to connect all these external services or tools or resources, whatever, to your models. I've been doing it in Claude for a long time. I just posted my 13 most used MCP servers the other day, here's a link to it. I'm excited that ChatGPT has accepted and adopted this protocol. And this is clearly just the first iteration. So let's just look at this TechCrunch article. ChatGPT introduces media recordings and connectors. Connectors are what we care about here. We could talk about recordings in another video. It's pretty standard. Zoom does it, Notion does it. Not relevant to this video. ChatGPT is adding new features for business users, including integration with different cloud services and MCP connection support for connecting tools for deep research. So here's the kicker, tools for deep research. As part of the launch, ChatGPT is gaining connectors for Dropbox, Box, SharePoint, OneDrive, and Google Drive. This allows ChatGPT to look for information across users' own services to answer their questions. A few other MCP servers, or connectors as they call it, will be HubSpot, Linear, and select Microsoft and Google Tools. So what you have to do is you have to go to your settings, and you scroll down to connectors. So we have this new tab here. I don't know why this is all weird. GitHub Deep Research was announced a few weeks ago, but now we see the other ones that are available. They're rebranding it as connectors, but they're also very clearly calling it MCP servers. So these are all the ones that come out of the box. These are the ones that they built, they trust. If you want to connect your own MCP servers, this is where you can do it. You press create and standard, give it an icon, give it a name, give it a description, but this is where it's important. MCB server URL. So that means we're connecting to remote MCB servers. What this means is the way we've been installing MCB servers now, for the most part, downloading them, running them locally on our computer is not relevant anymore, at least for this. And just to zoom out for a second, Claude also finally added integration, which is their official MCP servers as well. In Claude, where I have all my MCB servers installed, where I run them locally, they also added add integrations. So it also takes us to our settings. These are all my locally installed MCP servers. If you go to the bottom, you could do add integration. Same idea here, integration URL. For the last six months, we've been running them, testing them on our own devices, but now the standard is becoming remote hosted, which has its pros and its cons. Pros being, if a third party makes their own MCP server and it's hosted on their servers, you could be less worried about your data going to middleman, maybe less tool poisoning. There are of course still privacy concerns, but mitigated because that company is providing an MCP server. And right here I'm talking, of course, about using official remote MCP servers, not custom made ones. I also believe this is where we're gonna start seeing MCP servers become monetized. Maybe this will become a paid feature for most of these services. In ChatGPT, they just give you the option to give it an icon and give it a description. The rest is the same. And then we see these two warnings. One, beta intended for developer use only, and I trust this application, meaning you could connect to your own MCP servers or third-party MCP servers but you have to click this box pretty much saying OpenAI is not responsible for whatever you connect to here. And they're obviously managing liability. That makes sense. Okay, so let's now just go to the documentation on platform.openai.com. Here's their whole page on MTP servers, and this is specifically for ChatGPT. Let me zoom in a bit. Standard explanation of MCP. Here is where we start to see the limitations. Connect any of your tools, including proprietary systems to ChatGPT deep research. Then talks about the MCP ecosystem, we're still in the early days of MCP. Popular remote MCP servers include Cloudflare, HubSpot, Intercom, PayPal, Pipedream, Plaid, Shopify, Stripe, Square, Twilio, Zapier, and more companies will make their official MCP servers. The MCP protocol itself is also early. We expect to add many more updates to our MCP tool as the protocol evolves. And I really do hope so because it, it is actually very limited right now. Then it links to a section on risk and safety information. I talk a lot about risk and safety of MCV servers. Now, again, this is a bit different because until now we were hosting them locally on our computer. That's what I've been suggesting to do. But this approach, which is now becoming standard, is that now you're connecting to someone else's MCV server. And that somebody else, for the most part, is some other service you're already using. So they probably already have access to your data. If it's Stripe, if it's PayPal, if it's whatever. So you're just connecting ChatGPT and these external services. 
Okay, then they talk about build MCB server. You can do it on Cloudflare, your function, stainless, and many more. I actually made a video a few weeks ago about how I created remote MCB server with Cloudflare. It's really easy. And what I did is I connected sequential thinking to Cloudflare so I could use it with SSC. So technically it should work here. It won't because this implementation only supports search tools. But you could watch that video to see how I created my own MCB server because you can do the same and connect it to ChatGPT. And here's where we see that limitation. MCB servers can have a number of tools. Currently, connecting to MCB servers in ChatGPT is limited to enabling users to perform deep research. This means your MCB server should resemble a search engine with tools for search and document retrieval, meaning all the other tools that we use with MCB, be it write, take actions, not relevant right here, at least not yet. Transport and titling. Your remote MCB server must be internet addressable. So again, not hosting it locally. Well, you can technically, but you're probably not gonna do that. Now back to ChatGPT. I'll just tell you that I connected my Dropbox, but again, I don't wanna run a long deep research on my entire Dropbox. I'm sure this will be very useful for large organizations. But for me, the way I use MCP on the fly with quick actions where I chain commands together, not very useful right now. So I disconnected the Dropbox and Gmail MCP servers. I don't see a use for them right now but I will reconnect them when MCP is supported with the regular models, non-deep research, and can take more actions and use more tools. So I'm waiting for that. But just to show you how it works, you're in a regular chat, say chat GPT 4.0, you now have to click the tools, and then you click to run deep research, and then you're able to connect your sources. And obviously you can turn them on and off. The only one I'm keeping online right now is GitHub because I use that with Codex, but the rest I disconnected for now because I don't need to share that data while it's not really useful for me. That being said, I'm very happy with what we got. And my last word of warning is I'm sure now we're gonna see a lot of third-party MCB servers not created by official companies, by individuals hosted online. And my word of warning is be careful because when you don't know and when you can't verify where you're sending your data because it's not being hosted locally on your computer and just talking to your LLM inference provider. Your LLM is now sending its MCB to a remote server, which is talking back to your LLM. Now we technically have a bunch more players in the mix. So it may be tempting to connect to these unverified, unknown third-party MCB servers that are hosted remotely, but I say, hold up, wait a minute, do it at your own risk, because as great as these things are, if done wrong, you might end up regretting it. So that's just my first look at ChatGPT's MCP integration connection. I think it's a good start. I like how they're taking the safe and less risk approach. At the same time, they're limiting the users that can use it, the platforms that can use it, the MCP servers we can use, and what we can do with the MCP servers. So to wrap things up, Claude is still the best place to use MCP servers for now, but this is a huge step for MCP being added to ChatGPT. I'm sure they're gonna add more capabilities to make it available to more users and more companies will release official MCB servers in the coming days and weeks. So I hope you found this video insightful or learned something. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.